This was like the best introduction I've ever gotten. Seriously, how many of you are fired up right now? Yeah? So first of all, big round of applause for Caitlin for being such a gem. You are, you are magical, my friend. Are you guys excited to build some courses? Yeah? You ready? Today we will take action, okay? We won't just be talking about it, we will actually take action. So I hope you're excited. Now, when people think about building online courses, they usually think about something like this, right? <laughs> this is the feeling. You laugh because you resonate, right? This is the feeling you get, this confusion, uncertainty, complexity, fear, limiting beliefs. It just feels like a different language. It feels like, you know, learning Mandarin for the first time. But it doesn't have to be like this. So maybe some of you, you've been dabbling in this idea of building a course, but some type of complexity has been holding you back, right? You wouldn't take the first step, but you couldn't get yourself to do it. Or maybe you took the first step, but the path was so winded. There are so many different options, and you didn't know how to proceed. Anybody here? Yeah, you can resonate with this? It's too complex, too confusing. Maybe some of you started building a course, you navigated this confusing path, but at some point those limiting beliefs kicked in. Right? And you realize, well, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe people will reject me, maybe there's just too much content out there, and you never got yourself to take the last few steps. Anybody here? Let's just be honest, right? And now, I'm sure that there are some people here that actually have built a course. You've built a course, you've filmed it, but you never clicked that publish button. The course is out there. It's amazing. It's valuable. It could be changing the world, but you couldn't get yourself to publish because of some, of time, some type of limiting belief. It's hard to admit, but anybody would like to admit? Anybody had this situation? Big round of applause for those people for admitting this. Takes a lot of courage. Now, today's gonna be an action-packed day. We have two hours together, it's a lot of time. I'll do my best to give you a ton of value. And by the way, I never take your time lightly, okay? Time is the most valuable resource. So, you know, what I'm trying to do today is I'm trying to give my all, right? Hopefully I'm gonna be drenched in sweat afterwards. I literally wanna squeeze everything I know and give it to you so you can get out there and build those courses. But before we get started, I wanna do a little experiment. And this is something that's gonna help us, first of all, to connect with one another, but it's gonna help us also on our course creation journey. And I wanna take the liberty of doing this really cool exercise because this is just the beginning of Mind Value, and I feel like, you know, from my experience, this exercise is gonna help everyone to connect on a human level. So, can you please stand up for a moment? Let's all stand up for a moment. Now, it's 10 in the morning, you know, coffee hasn't kicked in, so why not? Now, I want you to only sit down and just be very honest. Only sit down if over the last two weeks you haven't felt any fear, any self-doubt, any limiting belief, any insecurity. Then you can sit down. Otherwise, just keep standing. <laughs> Interesting. How many of you are surprised by this result? It's a bit surprising, isn't it? Hmm? I see some nods, I see smiles. I want you to look around at people now. Give people a couple of seconds each of eye contact, acknowledging their common humanity. Because we all struggle. I struggle, you struggle, we all struggle with something. You may be wondering, come on, man, why do you have to remind me of my struggles? You know, I wanted to get inspired. Why do you have to do it right from the beginning? Well, it's because this is what truly connects us, right? We, we all wear certain masks. We come here and we want to present ourselves from the best way possible. All right, let's just be honest. But we truly connect through that common humanity. So as you're looking around at people, do you feel more connected? Yes? Come on, I can't hear you. Do you feel more connected? Yes? Okay, yes, yes, you feel more connected. I feel more connected as well, you know? Even as a speaker, it's, it just feels so liberating and comforting to see that we are all in the same, well, not the same, but in the struggle. We all have different struggles. Now, why am I doing this right now? Well, because this is gonna help you to connect with people on this journey of mind value. It's gonna help you. Because maybe you see Vishen somewhere there and you wanna talk to him and limiting beliefs kick in. Should I talk to him? Everybody wants to talk to him. Ah, maybe I'll do it later. Or you see somebody else. Remind yourself that, if, he, if Vishen, are you here? Ah, okay, he didn't make it. You know, if he was here, he would be standing. I know him really well, he would be standing. Right? So remind yourself of all of those things. And I want you to take a snapshot, just look at the room and take a snapshot. 
embed this image in your head. And the reason is that when you build courses, it's going to push your comfort zone. It's going to require a lot of courage. There will be fear of rejection. But you have to remind yourself that even in a prominent room like this, with, with so many incredible individuals, all of us struggle with something. When you remind yourself of this, on your journey is going to be so much easier for you to pull the trigger and publish your damn course. Make sense? Yes. 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 Yeah, I, 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 felt the, I felt the power over there from your voice. All right, thank you. You can sit down. Thank you so much. Okay, let's... Oops, it's not work. Okay, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Okay, you like it? I love animals, so there may be more pictures of animals as we go along. So what is the big elephant? Uh, there's something I need to address right from the beginning as we talk about course creation. Any guesses? What is the big elephant in the room? Fear? Fear? No, that's going to come later. That's going to come later. Well, the pink elephant or the big elephant is this. Open AI, chat GPT. Ooh, Jimmy, is this even relevant, what you are teaching now? Should we even learn about courses, right? What about chat GPT? What about open AI? I can just go in there and I can say, hey, build me a course. Well, you could do it, but I firmly believe that in order to really build world-class courses, you have to understand the process. You have to work on your limiting beliefs. You have to work on your identity. When you do all of that, then you can use tools like ChatGPT to help you out. Why not? Sure, it's out there. You can do it. But I feel like nothing beats your core knowledge, the core understanding, viscerally knowing what course creation is all about. Do you agree with me? Yeah? That's why today, you know, I'm going to delve into many different things. In a second, I'm going to show you what we will talk about today. It's going to be a lot of different things. Now, certain things I'm going to limit because of the invention of ChatGPT, and I know you can do a lot of those things yourselves, but I still want to show you the core of building courses. Okay, so let's talk about it. So, what's going to happen today? Well, as you can see, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. First of all, in part one, we will start about talking about your fundamental mindset shift. We will talk about why you and why now. Why should you even build a course in this world of so many courses out there? How to overcome some of your limiting beliefs? Why your limiting beliefs are mostly an illusion, right? Then in part two, we will talk about finding or creating your niche. Because you can actually create a niche. You don't have to find it. And we will talk about identifying your audience, creating a customer avatar. So when you create your content and people you want to serve see it, they have this instinctive response, this was created for me. And then in part three, we'll talk about designing and structuring your course and your content. Sounds good? Are you excited? Well, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. This is not it, you know? There is more. There is more. Okay? Come on, we've got two hours. There is more. We'll talk about getting your course produced and shipped. What are different filming options? Now, of course, we won't get into tiny details of filming. This is beyond the scope of this presentation. But I'm going to show you various options for filming and actually publishing your course. And then in five, part five, we'll talk about best practices. Now, this part, to be completely frank, is a buffer, right? I want to do some exercises with you. If we have the time, we will delve into it. Otherwise, we will skip it. I added it on purpose. And then in part six, we will talk about cultivating your confidence and building the courage to push yourself out there. So we're going to create a sandwich. We start with soft, right? Limiting beliefs, your, your mindset. Then we get into the hard stuff, right? The processes, taking action. We're going to take action together. And then we will finalize with some of the softer but extremely important stuff. And, and by the way, the reason I want to talk a lot about limiting beliefs is because most people who don't publish courses don't do it not because they don't have the process, but because they have those limiting beliefs. When I talk to people, honestly, 80, 90% of people who don't publish courses, they don't do it because there is something holding them back. And I know people who, they publish books, they get on stages, they have the following, and they still tell me, Jimmy, man, getting in front of a camera is gonna be out there forever. I'm not sure if I can do it, okay? Some of you can resonate with this. So, this is the most important objective, though. I want you to change your identity from just being a passive consumer to becoming a creator. I want you to become a creator, right? Way too many of us, we tune into YouTube, we, we watch courses, we watch quests, and that's great, but we think that this is taking action. No, I want you to completely change your identity 
to becoming a creator, to, to creating a mark on this world, to leave in your legacy. So when something happens to you and you look back at your life, you know you gave it your all, you shared your knowledge. Because life is short, right? If you ever lost anybody you love, you know how short life can be. One day everything is going great, the next thing you know, bam, that person is gone. And this, at some point, is gonna happen to us. And, you know, time goes faster than we sometimes anticipate. And the worst thing you can have in your life is this pain, the heaviness of regret. When one day you wake up and you realize, damn, I, I had a course in me, I had a book in me, I had a speech in me, but I never published it, I never went out there, never got on that damn stage, right? So what are we gonna talk about here? Of course, it's about building courses, but it also applies to other realms, to, to publishing your knowledge in general, okay? So, first of all, a couple of things about myself, and, and you know, I, I wanna tell you just very briefly about my journey. Caitlin did a great job sharing my story, so I'm gonna make it super brief. But I just want to tell you that I have the white belt mentality. So, you know, when, when you're waiting there in the corner and you hear the stats and, and, and all of the great things, it's easy to believe in your own bullshit, right? But the reality is that we are just human. And as, I, as we proved right at the beginning, and I have the white belt mentality because the more I learn, the more I realize that there is more to learn. I want you to know this, just because I'm here doesn't mean that I'm better, right? No, I just know a little bit more about course creation and I'm gonna do my best to share this knowledge. So, I'm a Polish underdog, as you know, right? Grew up in post-communist Poland, lots of limiting beliefs, anxiety issues, low level of self-esteem, low level of confidence. I had no money, I had no confidence, I had no mentors, my parents did a great job, right? But they didn't do what I wanted to do, right? I didn't know anybody who would leave Poland. Right? And, 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 and start a business right? and travel around the world. I didn't, I didn't know anybody like this. Right? So I started from zero, from scratch. And I'm delivering proof that anybody can do it. Right? I'm, I'm teaching in my non-native language. I know a lot of you struggle with that a little bit as well. We'll talk about it soon. So I just wanted to let you know that anybody can do it. So these are my students. This is my Udemy profile. Um, what I'm really proud of is not the numbers, but that map. And this is the first benefit of building courses, is the global impact you have, right? You see pretty much every single country in the world, you know, Congo is not there, North Korea, Greenland, like that couple of places, right? But apart from that, it's every single country. And the crazy thing is that, and I'm not BSing you, this summer, you could teach people from 50, 70, 100 different countries. You could. There are the tools out there, there are the platforms, you could make it happen. You could look at your own map and realize, wow, I am having a global impact without even having to go to those places. Are we excited about it? How does it, yeah, yeah? Awesome. Now, I have a quest with Vision. Anybody took my quest, by the way? Okay, so I appreciate it, thank you. So, uh, as you can see, it's almost 10 hours long. Today we have two hours. So, I can't teach you every single thing, but I'm using the 80-20 principle. Basically, the 20% the of uh, inputs create 80% of results. I'm trying to teach you the most important things to get you from here to here. Now, I also speak on a lot of different stages, and by the way, one of the reasons I get to do it is because of my online courses, right? When you wanna speak on a stage, and the organizer of the event sees that you have an online course, it is the living proof that you know how to present. They can essentially test drive your content. So if you want to speak on stages, well, courses will help you to do it. Now, I also work for various companies. I, I do corporate training for some massive companies. And again, one of the reasons I get to do it and paid a lot of money from some of those companies is because of my online courses, right? So that's another benefit, right? And by the way, I just published a book uh, last month. Uh, which I'm very, very happy about. This is pre-chat GPT, by the way, you know? <laughs> so just, just to make it clear, right? Almost 300 pages of my experiences of building courses. No, no bullshit, upsell links, none of that. Pure value, 270 something pages of, of my stories and, and strategies and tools, okay? But again, remember, all of this started in post-communist Poland, you know, me growing up with limiting beliefs and making a decision that I'm gonna create something. And if I did it, you can do it too. So part one, let's talk about the mindset, okay? This is powerful. Now, let me address another big elephant in the room. I know that some of you here are excited, right? Mindset, yes, let's talk about mindset. Statistically, some of you are sitting here and you're thinking, come on, man, just show me the process. Just, yeah? <laughs> come on, man, just show me how to do it. Talk about platforms, I wanna make some money. Right? 
So you can't please everybody. Well, right? Like if I just talk about the process, those of you who need help with mindset will be like, well, I don't like this presentation. It's not going to help me because yes, I know the process, but I can't publish and vice versa. So you need to understand, I'm trying to pull a couple of different things together. We got to talk about mindset first because really this is one of the biggest stumbling block. So I want to address some of the illusions that we have as aspiring course creators. Because when you really think about it, most of our fears, most of our worst case scenarios that we paint in our heads are just an illusion. Just like this uh, camel over there. It's a weird camel, you know, maybe uh, <laughs> some genetically modified or maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's an illusion, right? But the problem is that when you're in the middle of the sandstorm, you can't see clearly, right? We all have blind spots. You are in your life. You are the main character in your game of life. So it's hard to really see what is wrong. You have those blind spots and, and right now we will uncover them. And my goal for this part of this session is for you to realize that those limiting beliefs, they don't matter. That you can take them and you can accept them for what they are and then you can throw them away and get started on your journey of course creation. So let's address some questions. Okay, this is a very common question. I have an accent, right? People won't take me seriously. I spoke to a couple of people here already, right? Who, who told me that, man, you know, like I want to get on a stage. I, I want to build a course, but I have an accent. I have a strong accent, right? Will people take me seriously? Will people laugh at me? So I want to show you something. I want to show you a video. Now, some of you, listen, if you went to my presentations, you probably, maybe you saw this video. I think it's worth sharing it with you. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build it up, right? So back in the day, I used to mispronounce a lot of words. Like I would say determine instead of determine. I would say predator instead of predator. Like, you know, Polish guy just mispronouncing a lot of things. I still mispronounce some words, but back then it was quite dramatic. Now, one word you don't want to mispronounce is the word ice. And some of you, well, I hear some of you laughing, you know where this is going, right? So I was making a video maybe nine years ago, something like this. I was making a video, and by the way, it's hard to watch these videos, but I'm gonna do it anyway, I'm gonna show it to you, you know? In that video, I wanted to talk about eye contact. And I wanted to say that when you look directly into someone's eyes, you may feel anxiety, you may feel strange feeling in your stomach, right? You may, you, may, you know, just feel uncomfortable. Well, enjoy, this is how it came out. You ready? Yeah? And you probably saw it, maybe you experienced it yourself, you know, you look directly into somebody's eyes and you feel a little bit uncomfortable. You feel some strange feeling deep in your stomach. You can't explain it, but you feel, you know, you feel overwhelmed. You feel overwhelmed, of course. <laughs> you look directly into someone's ass. Of course you feel overwhelmed. Now, in case you missed it, in case you missed it, here is the replay. Here's a replay. And by the way, as you build courses, when you make a little mistake like this, don't do what I did just now. Don't loop those mistakes. It's gonna, it may kill your self-esteem, but check this out. You look directly into somebody's eyes. Now you look directly into somebody's eyes. Now you look directly into somebody's eyes. Now. <laughs> now, the reason I'm showing you this video, you know, yeah, sure, it's nice to have a few laughs, but the true reason I'm showing you this video is because this video got a lot of views. Now it's even more, this, it got a lot of views, you know? <laughs> not because, I, at least I say this to myself, not because of the ass, right? Some people made a comment, some people are joking about it. But here's the thing, this video helped a lot of people. It was about being more comfortable in your eye contact, how to look directly into people's eyes, right? So, so it was helping people. Now I had a temptation, you know what, maybe I'll just delete this video, I'm just gonna take it, take it down. I mean, I look pretty funny there as well, I, you know. So I decided not to do it because it was helping people. It was giving people value. And when you worry about your accent, you have to remember that it's ultimately about you creating value for other people. It's you, you creating transformation for others. It's not about you, you are just the vehicle for whatever it is that you are creating. And by the way, and here, here's an interesting thing, when you have some type of an accent, people actually resonate with you more. You become more human, right? If I come up here and I have no flaws and I'm perfect, and I have like a, this amazing British accent, for example, right? Then, you know, sometimes it can be intimidating. It can be intimidating, but when you come in and you have an accent, 
people are like, oh wow, that's, that's just a human. Okay, so accent, not a problem. Not a problem, okay? How many of you already feel better about your accent? Those of you who are not from, okay, perfect, awesome. Okay, limiting belief number two. Come on, Jimmy, I'm not a famous expert. Why would anybody want to buy my content, right? How many of you sometimes feel like, well, you know, I'm not the best in the world. I know something, but I don't know everything. Why would I even publish? Like, let's just be honest. Raise your hands high if you feel like this sometimes. Okay, look around. Just keep your hands up and look around. Interesting. It's almost every single one of you, right? Interesting. Now, let me start with this. I, I, I want to I dismantle this limiting belief. Okay, let me give you an example. Anybody familiar with masterclass.com? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So masterclass.com, they've got almost 200 different uh, authors, creators, and all of them are famous. These are just some examples, right? I mean, you have Branson there, you have Scorsese. It's crazy. So we've got almost 200 of them teaching different classes, and it costs less than 200 bucks per year. It's pretty affordable, right? So how is it possible that with masterclass.com available that 60 million people buy Udemy courses? Udemy, made by instructors like you and me, regular people. Why would people buy courses made by regular people if they have access to Scorsese, to Gladwell, to those types of people? Why? Connection, what else? Relatability. Exactly, wow, yes, relatability. So, this is a good example. Do you think this dude over there, he's like a world champion in cycling? Ah, huh? oh, he's just a dad, you know? Right, he doesn't have to be the best in the world, but clearly he knows more than that kid, so he can teach him, right? So, a lot of us, we think, and, and look, we, we will talk about a couple of different things when it comes to mindset towards the end, but so I don't want to reveal too much now. But a lot of us think, well, I have to be really the best and I have to be 150 steps ahead of whoever I'm teaching. No, you don't need 150 steps ahead. You need maybe five, seven, 10 steps ahead, right? If you used to be here, this used to be your struggle, right? If you are already here two, three years later, you can give that person a hand and help that person to come to your side. But if you are over there, far away, that person cannot possibly resonate with you. So imagine you know, a billionaire trying to teach personal finance, right? how to do budgeting, daily budgeting, groceries. You wouldn't take it seriously, come on. Like, what are you talking about? So that limiting belief is just BS, okay? No, you don't have to be the best in the world. You need to have the passion for your topic. Of course, you have to be an expert, but you have to be just some steps ahead of the game. Okay, next one. What if nobody's gonna buy? I will look like a failure. Anybody feels like this sometimes? What if nobody's gonna buy, yeah? Yeah, a lot of you. Okay, well, let's dismantle this as well. If no one buys your course and you publish your course on your own platform, nobody's gonna know. We're gonna talk about platforms later, but no one's gonna know. <laughs> why, why, why would they know? They, they don't have access to your dashboard. And they see the landing page, it's like, well, I guess she's doing well. They have no idea. Now, if you publish a course on a platform like Udemy, you know, one of those public platforms with Marketplace, there are stats available, but you know what? Even if no, nobody buys, you can release free access codes and give them to some of your friends, to your inner circle, and suddenly you have a couple of hundred people on your course. And again, no one knows whether they paid or not. Okay, so this should not be a limiting belief. Remember, like, we often assume that everyone is digging into our lives. Like we had, like, you know, like we did something terrible in the past and they're like digging in and in. No, no one's digging into your life. They're too busy thinking about their own lives. Next limiting belief, you know? What if people will hate my content, right? What if I'm gonna be a failure? What if I get rejected? Hard to admit, but how many of you feel like this sometimes? I appreciate the honesty, okay? You, you notice how before hands went up really fast? previous ones and now it went really, really slow. We don't like to admit that we feel rejection, but we all do. It's hardwired, right? We are tribal creatures, right? If you got rejected by your tribe, back in the day, it could have meant death. So this is a legitimate fear. But here's the thing. People who don't like your content, people who completely don't resonate with your content will probably not even find it. Why would they, right? If you teach, uh, astral projection, or you teach tarot, or you teach yoga, and there's a person who doesn't believe in those things, why in the world would they be searching for it, right? And nowadays you search for everything, P things don't just appear, right? Like Google knows you better than, actually in many ways you know yourself, right? So 
they give you whatever, whatever you actually lack. So, so you know, if, if you publish a class, like, first of all, people who completely don't resonate, they won't even find it. They won't be looking for it. And guess what? Even if, the, if they find it, somebody finds it, they watch your trailer, they see the curriculum, they see your cover photo, and they don't like it. They just don't resonate. Maybe they don't like something about you. You know what? They're just going to move on. Like, how many times you moved on? How many times you saw, even on Mindval, you see a quest, right? There are a lot of quests, and you browse through the quests. Oh, you know what? This one? Nah, I don't like it. Nah, not for me, not for me, not for me. Like, do you actually stop and ponder why don't I like it? Right? Do you go inside and you're like, you know what? I don't like it. Let's dig into it. <laughs> you know? Let's say, like, you see my quest, say so you don't, well, probably if you're here, you resonate, but say you don't resonate, it's like, Jimmy in the rain. I don't like his beard. He looks like an asshole. Let's dig in. Let's buy it and see why he is a bad guy and then tell everyone about it. What happened? Now, there are haters out there, sure, sometimes, but if somebody goes that far, then, you know, that's their problem, not your problem, okay? Make sense? Awesome. And this is, by the way, the spotlight effect. Right, now I'm legitimately in a spotlight. So, we oftentimes we think that, well, we are, we are in a spotlight. Everyone is looking at us, everyone is thinking about us. You walk into a room full of people and you think everyone notices you walking in. Right? And there are legitimate situations when, yes, you are in a spotlight, like the way I am right now. Right? Or you build a course, you are in a spotlight, but it's not as strong as you may think. Right? We, we often assume that people just spend all the time in the world thinking about us, but guess what? They are too busy thinking about themselves. People are too busy thinking about themselves. All right? Next one. It's too crowded. Every, everything has been said on this topic. Right? A lot of us think, well, there are too many courses out there. Now, here's the thing. How many brands of ketchup are there? How many brands of beans? Like, how many brands of coffee, right? And, you know, and, and, and people say, well, this coffee is better, that coffee. It's all very similar. You go to the supermarket, you've got tens of thousands of items there. Do we need all of that stuff? No, we don't, right? We don't need all of those brands. Yet, they, you know, they make it happen, right? They, they make sales. They stay in the business. Because people want variety. And the more we move into the future, the more we want customized solutions from people that we trust and we resonate with. Right? This is why it's so important to, well, we talk about it later, but this is why it's so important to create customized content. So what you want to do is you want to create content that is unique. Everyone here is unique. You have your own story. You have your own difficulties you went through, your own dramas, your own specific angle, your own sense of humor. That's what people want to watch. Now, you don't have to impact millions of people. It's not about that. But if you find 1,000, 10,000, 20,000 people that resonate with you, uniquely who you are, that's it. That is all you really need. The next one. People think, well, I'm simply too old. Now, obviously, this won't apply to, to a lot of people here, but, but there are people out there that I've met who say, well, Jimmy, this is a young people's game. I'm too old. Why would I build a course? I mean, my, you know, I'm 45, I'm 55, I'm 60, right? Why would I build a course? This is young people's game. So I want to share with you the story of my father, okay? My father built his first online course in his 50s, okay? I brainwashed him, took, took a, as you can imagine, I practiced a lot for this presentation with my father, you know? Just talking to him a lot about building courses. By the way, this is my father. Nice beard. Anybody notice something weird about this picture? No. <laughs> Well, I used one of those AI tools and basically made myself look a bit older. I wanted to mess with it. I was curious if anybody's going to notice. Well, that's not my father. This is my father. This is my father. Yeah. And this is my mom, by the way, over there. And the reason I'm showing you this picture is because now they build courses together. So, so you know, my father started maybe seven, I don't remember actually, seven years ago, something like this. You know, I, I really pushed him. So he started building courses with, with my brother. And nowadays, my mom and my dad, as they travel, they go on holidays to different places, they combine it with building courses. And this is his profile. Almost 160,000 people. Crazy, right? Started in his 50s. Now, anybody notice this gentleman sitting somewhere here in the audience? Where is he? Point him out. Point him out. All right. Oh, OK. So let's do this. I'm, look, I'm going to put him on a spot. Do we have a mic? 
Let's give him a mic. Come on. Why not? I'll put you on the spot. I know he can handle it, so let's do it. How many of you want to hear from him? Yeah? All right. Come on, come on. Come over here, man. Dr. Roy Rain, come on. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Look at this. Look at this handsome young man. Look at this. He looks better now and feels better than when he was 40. Intermittent fasting, training, you know, clean food, like just smashing it every single day. Question for you. Does it work? Yeah, let's try. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, perfect. Oh, good. How, how does it feel? Does it feel surreal to see those stats on a screen and see all the people here? Like, what if somebody told you that this would happen seven, eight years ago? You know, um, it is surreal. Just hold it. It is surreal, but I'm not going to be brutal to myself. It feels good. It really <laughs> feels good. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is that, if I had known, because I think I started around the age of 50, if I had known eight years ago that eight years later I would be looking at those numbers, I would have been less resistant when you were brainwashing me <laughs> to create Udemy content. I would have been less resistant. Was I, was I pain in the ass? Like, just be honest. How did it feel when I kept nagging you to do it? I don't, it doesn't behoove me to use such words, but... Uh, but Jimmy was indeed a pain in the a pain in there. In the ice, yeah? In there. In, <laughs> in the ice. You know, I had uh, let me tell you why. I, 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 okay, I'm good. I, let me tell you why. I had my own small thing going. I was getting into my car in the morning, driving to different companies and doing my own little thing. You know, self-improvement courses, teaching managers, directors, and so on. So that was my comfort zone connecting with people face to face. You have a problem, let's sit down, talk about the problem. We discuss the problem, we get into the problem, and we find a solution. That was my comfort zone. So he was telling me to take my content, put it into a small package, and ship it to the whole world. <laughs> no, to the whole world? <laughs> that was not for me. I said no. So I retaliated. I was stubborn but he was more stubborn. <laughs> he, he was relentless, and he kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and I realized that he was not going to give up, so I gave in. <laughs> and then yes. I created my first course. I created my first course, and um, we used an iPhone. You know, the iPhone with the smallest number. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, I had 17 courses. I said, yeah, well, wow, that's it, right? But then problems appeared. Two years ago, I stopped creating courses. I, I said to myself, hey, Roy, you don't have any more content in this small head of yours. I have already sold my content to people. So how am I going to create courses, create more courses, create, create more content? And then Jimmy came back. <laughs> And it was a totally different story. So once again, he maneuvered me in the right direction. So he was born to do this. You see this guy, you know, he can just come up and... Uh. Be before you go, I want to ask you, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure, again, I'm, I'm trying to always address what's happening in the audience's mind. I'm sure they're curious what you would tell them, like the final message specifically for them. They are sitting there, they are trying to build a course. You could see, right, limiting beliefs, all types of different, you know, internal troubles. What would you tell them? What you wish somebody told you, maybe, before? Um, okay, so, first of all, thank you very much for the warm reception, because, you know, when I walked up here, I, I felt like Denzel Washington, you know? <laughs> so, what the hell is going on here? But, okay, so, here is what you need to know. You need to have a what. You need to know exactly what you want. Listen to him because he knows what he's saying. That's number one. Listen to him because you're here because you want to create courses. You need to have your what. And sometimes you may have your what. You may have your goal. You may know what you want to do. But sometimes you may not know that. 
you need someone out there, a friend of yours, a significant other, to recognize your internal resources and push you in the right direction and keep pushing you. Because you may not even know what you want, but they know what you should want. That is very important. And once you have your what, you have to find two more things. You have to understand your whys. Why do I want what I want? And once you have your whys, well, sorry, that's not enough. You have to have your when. You have to know when you want to do it because if you don't have that end time, you will never get started. You will procrastinate, believe me. So um, look, you're here because you want to create courses. If you want to create courses, stay in this room. <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> if you don't want to create courses, stay in this room. <laughs> yeah, okay. great stuff, great stuff. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Wow. And also my mom is over there. Round of applause for her as well. She learned how to film videos. And they used to be medical doctors, by the way. Medical doctors reinvented themselves a couple of times. Okay, so this is really inspiring. I'm, I'm impressed with this. I mean, I didn't expect this. Um, okay, so we talked about limiting beliefs, right? Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to think about the biggest limiting belief that you have, that you still have in your head, right? Think about it. What is really holding you back? Like the number one thing. And then ask yourself how realistic this is. You know, this is a great tool to eradicate those limiting beliefs. How realistic is that worst case scenario that you're painting for yourself? Is it truly realistic or is it just an illusion? Hmm. And can you prevent it from happening? So for example, a lot of people say, well, what if I get bad ratings? Is it realistic? Well, it is, of course. Some people may give you a bad rating. Can you prevent it from happening? Sure you can, right? Like, to some extent, you build a great course. You, you test drive your course with a couple of friends to figure out what is working, what is not working. So you bulletproof it, right? So you can prevent it from happening. And then, if it happens, can you fix it? Right? So in this example, you get a negative rating, you get one star. Can you fix it? Yes, of course you can, right? You can respond to that reviewer w without ego, and you can say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry you didn't like the course. Uh, I always do my best to give you as much value as possible. What are the things I can do to make this course better for you? Now, in some cases, that person will actually change their rating. It happened to me before. They changed their rating because now they feel bad. They gave me one star, right? Uh, for real, right? But also, what you can do is you can release a couple of free coupons to your friends, right? And, and, and get a couple of extra five-star reviews to balance out the one-star rating. This is just a random example. But this process, and we don't have that much time today to really dig into it. Ideally, we would have like 10 minutes for you to do it right now. But use this process. Use this process to eradicate any remaining limiting beliefs. Now, I want to switch gears. We talked about limiting beliefs. I want to switch gears to something way more positive. Let's talk about the benefits of building courses. But I talked enough, right? So I want to do an exercise. Let's do a partner exercise. So you're going to partner up with somebody, two people, and you're going to stand up, and I want you to share the benefits of building courses, all the benefits you can think about, one after the other. So person A says one benefit, the person B listens. Then take a few seconds to digest it in the context of your life. Now person B speaks, and then back to person A. And let's see for how long you can keep brainstorming different benefits of building courses. Sounds good? Sounds clear, yeah? Okay, let's stand up, let's stand up. And let's get into it, and it's gonna be really interesting. Oh, and by the way, important thing, guys, important thing, when you can't think about anything else, sit down, okay? Welcome back. Thank you very much for a piece of advice with clapping. It's always hard to bring people back in, which is great, which is great. I was worried, honestly, that, you know, within 30 seconds, a lot of people will be sitting down, but I have a feeling it could be talking for an hour, which is, 
<laughs> which is great, which is great. So here are some additional benefits of building courses, just so you have some extra ideas. And what I want you to do is, I want you to just write down whatever came up. Just take a piece of paper. I want you to internalize it. I want you to write it down. So write down, take a piece of paper, write down all the most exciting reasons for building a course. I'll put that slide back on. I'll give you one minute, write it down, because it's gonna make everything way more powerful. I see you're taking pictures, which is great, but still write down, write down the reasons. Why you specifically have to build a course. How can it change your life? The life of your family? What is the impact you wanna have on the world? Let's carry on later on. Let's carry on. Do you feel like you could keep going for way longer? Yeah, yeah? Okay, this is great. Now, it is, again, it's tempting to just let you go for longer, but then I wanna be able to cover everything else. So, again, today, my purpose here is that you get started with the process, right? So you get started with those things. Later on, you can finish everything off, but it's about building the momentum in so many different ways. So let's move on to part two right now. Oh, and by the way, that list, as you keep writing it later on, remind yourself of it every single day. Ideally, every morning when you wake up, just look at that list and remind yourself why you have to build a course. Because we all have those moments when we just, we just procrastinate and eventually our ideas fade into oblivion, right? We all have been there. I know some of you came to this presentation last year. It was shorter, but you came in and you still haven't built a course. So this time I really wanna make sure that you go out there and you make it happen. That list is gonna help you. But let's move on. Let's talk about creating, finding your niche and figuring out what your audience actually is. So what should you teach, right? Now some of you know what you wanna teach, a lot of you don't know what you wanna teach. So of course you have to be passionate about your topic, you have to be an expert. Again, not the biggest expert in the world, but you have to be an expert. And you need to have your own unique angle. Now, you want to go narrow. You don't wanna go broad. There's time and place for going broad, but especially when you're getting started, you want to go narrow. And the reason is that you want to trigger your audience's RAS, the reticular activating system. Some of you know it, RAS is this part of your brain that controls your focus. Whatever you focus on. You can't focus on everything all the time. Right now you could focus on your blinking. Now that I said it, it's weird, right? Blinking, we are all blinking, right? It feels strange. Now you're focusing on it. You could focus on your breathing. Now you probably are actually focusing on your breathing. You could focus on a delicious pizza. Hot pizza straight from the oven, some nice Italian restaurant, melting cheese, nice crust. Some of you literally imagine pizza now. Some of you started salivating, right? But you probably forgot about blinking. So my point is, your focus is very limited. It's like a beam of light. It's like middle of the night, you take a flashlight, you go to the garden, and you can flash it at a dead cockroach, right? And you can choose to feel disgusted. Or you can find a flower and you can get inspired, right? So you have to control your focus wisely. Now, why is this relevant? Well, because when your audience sees your course, when they see your landing page, when they see one of your promo videos, 
you want them to get triggered in a good way. You want their RAS to start pumping, right? Just like when you go to a party and you're talking to somebody and it's very loud and you can barely hear them, and somebody says your name and you can hear your name, even though that person is five meters away. That's what you want to happen with your audience. When they see your stuff, you want them to be like, wow, this was made for me. This person speaks my language. This is exactly what I need. Make sense? Yeah? We have to trigger their RAS. In order to do it, we have to create a specific niche and we have to understand our audience. So you want to build a niche, right? Instead of just teaching yoga, you can teach yoga to CEOs. If, for example, you used to run your own company and used to be extremely busy, you know the, the downsides of being a CEO, you understand their language, their world, why not create something for them? Right? If, for example, you used to struggle with technology, but you managed to teach yourself how to build websites, well, you could teach web design to people who hate technology, right? If you have ADHD like I have, for example, right, find it difficult to sit in one place, well, you could create uh, meditation for people with ADHD, right? If I saw something like this, I would probably buy it, right? Because when I see it, I'm thinking to myself, well, that person created a meditation course specifically for me. So, Ask yourself, what are the experiences, the uniqueness that you have to offer, and based on that, create a niche. But there are two major problems when people choose how to pick a topic, when people try to figure out what to teach, right? Well, first of all, there is internal scarcity. A lot of us, we just don't believe that we really have what it takes. There are a lot of demons. I know it's not easy to admit, but how many of you sometimes feel this internal scarcity? Who am I to teach? Anybody? Just raise your hands. Okay, so it's roughly 35, 40% of the room. Probably means 50%, just some people don't want to raise their hands, right? So let's say half of the room. Now, some people, it's almost like there are too many things to teach. There's the paradox of choice, right? It's not about scarcity, it's about how do I even get started? There are like a bazillion things that I could talk about in my online courses. How many of you resonate with this? Okay, a lot of you as well. So it's roughly 50, 50. How many of you have both of those challenges. On the one hand, oh wow, right away, hands went up, you know? <laughs> you know so on the one hand, uh, yes, uh, you have the paradox of choice. There are many things you want to teach, but then also there's this internal scarcity, sometimes popping in limiting beliefs, etc. So let's resolve those problems. Let's figure out what you're going to teach, and then we're going to talk about your audience. And by the way, this is so important, probably one of the most important things you can do on the path to building courses. Because if you don't understand this, you won't be able to build a proper course, right? In order to create a map for yourself, you need to know where your destination is, right? So this, this in a sense, is your destination. So I want to do an exercise, okay? I want you to think about all the impossibilities that became your possibilities, that became your reality, right? Think about all those different things that back in the day literally seemed impossible. Maybe the language you were learning or the job you wanted to have, right? new passion you wanted to pursue. Whatever it was, think about those things. For instance, for me, English, right? I had to teach myself English. Now I speak on stages in English, right? We all have those things. Think about different roadblocks that you overcame. Maybe you went through a really tough breakup and you made it the other way. Maybe you had depression and you managed to overcome it. Maybe you've learned a really difficult programming language, right? Maybe you learned how to build websites or, or you did a 200 hour yoga course but I want you to think about those things and write them down, okay? Let's take a minute to write those things down. So as you keep writing down, I'm just gonna explain what you can do with this. I know some of you finished, some of you keep writing things down, but now what you can do is you can get a lot of ideas from this list, right? A lot of us don't realize how much we can actually teach. You can remember, you don't have to be the best in the world. You just have to be some steps ahead of the game. You've learned a new skill, you overcame depression, you've overcame heartbreak, whatever it is, you could teach that to other people. And this will give you ideas for what you can actually teach. How many of you are getting already ideas for what you can teach? I'll raise your hands, okay? Great, great. Now, afterwards, please continue with this list, okay? Please add more things to this list and use it as a foundation to come up with your course topics. Now, what about the paradox of choice? What can you do if you have too many things to teach? Well, the most important thing to remember is that 
your first course doesn't have to define you. You can build a lot of different courses, right? A lot of us feel like, well, the first course I'm going to publish will be set in stone. It's going to completely define who I am. That's going to become my identity. Not true. You can always build more courses. So you want to lower your pressure, right? You want to treat your first course as work in progress. This is not a course. This is just a part of a bigger journey. So if you experience that paradox of choice, just ask yourself, hey, what type of course could help me with my brand? That's the easiest thing to do. Let's, let's build my brand. Which type of course would help me with my brand? And just publish a course like that. And then you can decide to build more and more courses. Now, you also need to figure out what is your customer avatar, okay? So customer avatar is essentially the representation of your ideal customer. These are your raving fans. These are the types of people that will resonate with your message. These are the people you really want to help. But you want to make that avatar very specific, right? Now, we all want to change the entire world. But if you aim to help everybody, you will please no one. Because no one will have that distinct feeling of that person is speaking directly to me. Right? We talked about RAS, the reticular activating system. You want to create an avatar, so when that avatar sees your content, they feel like, wow, this was literally made just for me. And you want to give your avatar a name. You literally want to create a, a, a fake, an imaginary person, and give that person a name. And as you're building your course, you can then always ask yourself, you know, how can I help Susie or John or whoever that person is? And by the way, if there is someone in your life who could be your avatar, like a real person that you can help, that's even better. Because whenever you're building courses, whenever you're creating content, coming up with structure, whatever it is, you're asking yourself, how can I help that person? So let's define your customer avatar. And again, I know I, I give you a lot of different exercises. I, I'm not giving you enough time to really go deep into it, but that's the purpose. I want you to get started, because once you have that momentum, you will leave this room with a bunch of notes, that you can then complete. That, this is the point, right? The hardest step is the first step. Right? If I just give you exercises to complete later, you will procrastinate. There's a party later, there's a party tomorrow, there's lots of things going on, right? Yeah, I'll do it next week, I'll do it next month, and next thing you know, we see each other here a year from now. I don't want that to happen. I want you to come out, you have a full-blown list of notes. Oh, oh, I, I wrote seven things already. Let me add another seven. That's what I want you to do. So. These are the questions you can ask yourself when defining your customer avatar. And I want you to just take a minute, take a minute to think about this and write down some bullet points. Don't make it perfect. Perfection is gonna kill you. Don't make it perfect. Write down whatever comes to your mind. You will complete it later, okay? By the way, to give you an example, me presenting here, you know, I know that some of you have courses, but this is not my avatar. You still learn, but my avatar is a person who doesn't have a course yet. Right? So whatever I'm talking about, I calibrate it towards those who don't have a course or are in the process of building. Right? So I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, a, a few people here who have courses, right? They may know a lot of the things I'm talking about, but that's fine because my avatar are those of you who don't have a course. That's why we are doing this. All right, let's slowly start coming back in. Again, you can complete this later. Not you can, you will complete it later. You'll add more things later. And by the way, later on, also ask yourself, maybe you have one of your customer avatars here. Probably yes. I'm sure there are people here at MindValueU that you could help. And when you find those people, you can actually talk to them. And you can ask them, hey, you know, what are your struggles, right? What are your challenges? You learn how to speak their language. And by the way, then you can use their language in your promo material, right? So let's say, imagine, it's just a random example. Imagine that you want to help um, single moms to be more assertive in the workplace, right? Well, when you talk to actual single moms about their workplace experiences, they may say, you know what, I'm tired of those wannabe alpha males who are trying to impose on me, right? For instance, you can use the same phrase in your promo. Are you a single mom? Are you trying to be more assertive in, in your workplace? Are you tired of those self-proclaimed alpha males who are trying to impose on you? Well, the, the great news is that there is a solution, right? So you can use their language to make your promo videos, to make your entire content better. But let's switch gears a little bit, okay? Let's talk about designing your actual course. Okay, now we did the foundational work, which is, again, extremely important. I'm telling you, it's ex this, there's a reason why I designed this presentation this way. I know I could have gone to the process of building content right away, but this is so important. So let's talk about 
designing your structure. Let's talk about landing pages. What is a landing page? Let's talk about building content. So first of all, I want you to understand what are the elements of a landing page. We won't go too deep into it, but I want you to, to know it. This, this is a fundamental thing. Of course, you need title, you need subtitle. Um, course objectives, we want to focus on the wins for, for your student. You want to have a powerful description, focusing on them, not on you, but on them, right? You want to break down the curriculum. Now, I know that some people prefer to make their courses mysterious, but from, I mean, yes, yeah, true, right? Some people say, well, you pay me and then you find out. I don't believe in that. I feel like if you want money from people, you want to tell them exactly what they're going to get out of it, right? Now, you need to have a decent cover image, promo video, which we will delve deeper into in a second because it's one of the most important things. You want testimonials. And by the way, when you publish your course, you will not have testimonials right away. So what you can do is you can ask people to watch your course before you publish and then use those reviews and testimonials to build social proof right away. Very important. Of course, you need your bio. Of course, ChatGPT can help you with a lot of those things, just putting this out there. And you want to create scarcity and urgency. So, so I want to give you an example, right? So this is one of my landing pages. This is about presentation skills. So you can see title, subtitle, you see the rating over there. Uh, you see there is a cover image, promo video, what you will learn, prominently displayed, right? So I focus on what they will learn. And by the way, this is just an example, right? There are plenty of landing pages out there. I want you to actually go back to courses that you purchased, and I want you to analyze their landing pages and ask yourself, why did I buy that course? I'm just giving you an example, right? So then you have the actual content here. These are different sections that are divided into videos, right? So this course, it's a big course, 23 sections divided into videos. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Description, and then of course, you know, the bio and reviews. And when you have those elements on a landing page, well, now people have everything they need, all the ingredients to make a decision whether they're gonna purchase or not. Now, Mindvalley has a bit different approach, but same ingredients, right? This is my quest with Vision. So you see there is a title, there is a trailer over there with a cover photo, how many students, how many stories, all of that info is in there. They have really nice visuals, right? They, they make it, you know, this, they know what they are doing basically, right? And they divide curriculum a little bit differently, but you can click on that plus button and you can see exactly what you're gonna learn. Now, of course, everyone here is familiar with Mindvalley. Just wanna show you those examples. But again, look at courses that attracted you and ask yourself, why was I attracted to that particular course? Break it down and then you can use it on your journey. Okay, so let's move forward. Idea clusters become sections, right? Rather than just dumping a bunch of videos into your course, you want to create a structure. Otherwise, people will get lost. So imagine having 40 different videos dumped in a course. People get confused. They, you know, they don't know what is what. But if you divide those videos into sections, that are the idea clusters, it makes so much more sense. For example, the first section, introduction section, right? If you te teach web design, the second section could be the, the basics of hosting and buying a domain, right? Basic stuff, right? The, the third section could be the basics of WordPress, right? But basically, you want to create those idea clusters. And you want to divide videos into sections. Right, you want to have three to eight videos per section, so you create those digestible chunks for people. Right? When people see too many things, they get overwhelmed. When they see that there is a section with, let's say, five videos, they say to themselves, you know what, I can't watch five videos tonight, let me go for it. And that's how you increase the completion rate. Now, here is an important thing, right? Promo, intro, and thank you video. Promo is the most important video of your course. We will dig deeper into promo videos, but introduction video is important as well, and thank you video. A lot of people forget about it. A lot of people go straight to teaching, but you want to introduce yourself. You want to tell people what they're going to learn, and you want to thank them for their time. You want to do that. A lot of people forget about it, and that's also an opportunity to tell people how they can find you, what are other things they can get from you. And also, the video length. This is so important, right? Imagine that you go to a course's landing page and you have just three videos. Three videos. Each one of them is half an hour long. Plenty of content. But what is your perception of value? Do you think, wow, 90 minutes of content? Or do you think, well, it's just three videos? Right? Probably the second option, right? But now imagine that you have 18 videos, right? Five minutes each, divided into sections. Right? Imagine you have a bunch of sections and you have 18 different videos. It's the same amount of time. It's 90 minutes for both courses. 
But in the second scenario, you have a perception of value because there are sections, there is structure, it's digestible. Make sense? Yeah? So always divide videos and, and don't make videos too long. Okay? The next thing, online course structure, right? So, so, so again, we talked about landing page, we talked about all of this. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. I, I, me I messed up this slide, I just realized. There's one more thing. Extra material. This is important. As you build your course, right, you want to listen to your audience's feedback and you want to add extra material based on that feedback. You can't assume that you know everything. No, no, no. You listen to your audience and if they tell you that something is missing, that they need bonus videos, that they need PDFs, etc., you want to give it to them. Make sense? Yeah? Awesome. Now, what I want to do right now is I want you to brainstorm this, okay? Whatever comes up to your mind, I want you to write it down. Based on that breakdown, I want you to write down any notes that you feel like writing right now. I just want to give you some time to digest it. I know it's a lot of content, and I'm going to go back to all of this so you can actually use it as an inspiration. What is the ideal video length? The ideal video length, I would say five to ten minutes. Yeah. With Vision, we, you know, we made 20 minutes video. Videos, I have to say, you know, we broke that rule. But in general, five to ten minutes. It depends on the course as well. If you do tutorials, if it's like a longer technical tutorial, you may want to have 15, 20 minutes. But in general, five to 10 is best. Otherwise, you know, people, people feel like it's too much to get started. How many, How many videos? Well, it depends. It honestly depends on the course. There are so many different ways to do it. I, I, I can't tell you. There are courses that are one hour long, five hours long. It depends on the overall course. But I would say, I'm going to talk about it a bit later. I, I, I believe that. You shouldn't try to build a massive course right from the get-go. Build smaller courses, and then if they work, you, build, you add more content. Okay, so if you've been writing some notes, of course, keep going afterwards. You took picture of that slide so you can carry on later on. But of course, you know, we don't have that much time, so I want to get into the process of reverse engineering your actual content, right? I feel like a lot of us make a mistake of designing content, trying to go from step one to step two, step three. But we actually have to start with the end in mind. We have to reverse engineer the process, right? If you want to design a you know, journey for your customers, for your students, you need to know where you want to get them, right? What is the ideal outcome, right? What is the why, right? So first of all, big elephant in the room, all of this stuff, you know, ChatGPT can help you, okay? I'm going to show you the process, but you can use ChatGPT to help you with all of this, right? But step one. You have to list the wins of your avatar. You already have your avatar, right? You figured out what is that person, what is that person's name, what are their needs, what are their desires, their fears, right? What has to happen for them so they feel like it's been a win. So the step one is to write down the wins that your avatar is going to get from your course. This is very important. And again, we, you know, try to write down at least a couple of wins right now as we go along. Later on, of course, add to it, but just write at least three or four wins of your avatar. And as you go to next steps, leave some space, because you will complete this later, you will add more later, so just leave some space to trigger yourself to continue afterwards. How many of you have at least like two wins, two free wins for your avatar? Raise your hands. Okay, great. So pretty much all of you, almost all of you. Okay, step two. Idea dump, okay? Not very poetic, but it is what it is, right? What you want to do is you want to look at the list of the wins for your avatar, and then you want to imagine that avatar and ask yourself, okay, we've got Amy here, or we've got John here. These are the wins that I want for that person. Okay, how can I give it to them? What are all the possible content pieces I could share with them? So think about stories, think about case studies, think about knowledge pieces, think about uh, all types of things, personal experiences that could help that person, that avatar. And you write everything down. Now, this will take you a while, okay? We, I, we can't do it here. You can at least start now, but ideally you want to spend an hour doing it. You want to just write down as many things as possible. But let's start right now. Let's, let's, I want to trigger the momentum. Start writing down at least something. Write down at least five, six different things. absolutely anything that could help your avatar, any content piece you have. And with idea dump, you don't want to be perfectionistic. Don't judge yourself. Write down whatever comes to mind. Just write it down. Later on, you're going to select it. For now, you just want to write it down. 
I guarantee you when you do it later, when you sit down for an hour, put some nice music, get a glass of red wine, whatever you like to drink, you come up with 50, 60 different things. I guarantee you that. There will be a block, but at some point when you push through that block, you'll start coming up with various things. Maybe a story you read about in a book, right? Somebody else's story, right? Maybe your personal transformation. Maybe there will be a case study. Maybe there's some research that you read somewhere and you're going to write it down, right? Maybe an exercise or action point you could give to your avatar. So the point is you want to just keep writing those things down and then you will use it as a clay to build your course. And then the next step is that as you look at that idea dump, you look at the wins for your avatar, you look at everything you have so far, now you ask yourself, okay, what are the idea clusters here, right? What are the possible sections that I could create for this course, right? So that's the next step, you create sections. And these are the draft sections, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. You will, you will you know, make them better, you will polish the titles later, but for now it's just about identifying the idea clusters. Can you already see some idea clusters in what you've written down? Yeah, just raise your hands if you can already see something. Okay, great stuff, great stuff. So, so later on, as you look at everything, you, I, you know, what you may want to do is you may want to put everything on a floor in front of you, right? Just to make it more visual, to get the bird's eye view. And then you look at it and then you ask yourself, okay, hmm, okay, section one, introduction, section two, this, okay, then this, okay, let's the, the, do the conclusion section. And you can look around and move things around and it's going to help you to figure it out, right? And only then you put it down on your laptop, okay? The next one is you will look at your idea dump, at various content pieces you came up with in the idea dump, and you will assign those pieces into sections. Pretty straightforward, right? So now you have 40, 50, maybe 60 different pieces of content you could create, stories, action steps, case studies, all of that good stuff. And now you ask yourself, okay, this one, where does it, where does it match? Should I put it in section one or section two? Hmm. Now let's put it in section three. Okay, what about this? Let's put it in section one. So you move things around and you put them under various sections. Does it make sense? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, perfect. It is a process. It's a dirty process. It's not gonna be ideal from the beginning. You will make some mistakes here and there, but that's okay, right? It's a draft. It's a dirty draft that's gonna help you to build an actual course. Now, I understand, I mentioned the elephant in the room. You could ask ChatGPT, hey, build me a structure for a course. But if you do it, you know what? Is it really your course? I feel like it's way better to start like this, and then you can still ask ChatGPT to help you to refine it, maybe to add something, to make it a bit more polished. But I feel like you wanna start with the fundamentals by yourself, yeah? And this is the final step, right? You want to keep polishing the curriculum. Now, when it comes to lectures, the process is very similar. We won't do it for lectures right now, but I just wanted to show you this. You start with end in mind, just like with the curriculum. You want to ask yourself, okay, for this particular lecture, what is the end that I have in mind for my avatar? What is the win that I want to give to my avatar? And then you ask yourself, okay, well, if I want this, for my avatar, what are the ingredients that I need to supply to make it happen, all right? So for example, if I'm teaching people about public speaking and I want to teach them in a specific lecture how to be more comfortable right before getting on a stage, now I look at my idea dump, I select different things and ask myself, okay, you know, for this specific lecture, what are the ingredients? Hmm. Maybe I can first talk about what's happening to you physiologically when you get on a stage. Why your heart is beating faster. Why you are sweating. What is happening in your head. Hmm. Then I can maybe add a little breathing meditation to that lecture. Then maybe I can add a personal story. And you know, so you pull things together based on the outcome that you want for that particular lecture. Does it make sense? Yeah? Perfect. So let's switch gears, let's move on to the most important video that you can ever create and it's the promo video, your trailer. By the way, how many of you got a bit of anxiety just looking at this picture, <laughs> right? You feel this? A lot of us get really anxious when we see the camera lens, and it can get a bit nerve-wracking, of course, you know, when you go to a studio, but promo video is your most important video, and you know, even though we don't have much time today, I really wanna dig into it and, and show you how to build promo videos that actually sell your courses. So there are a couple of ingredients for promo videos, AK trailers, right? So first of all, you need to have a hook point. 
You want to address the pain that your avatar, we always talk about avatar, that your avatar is experiencing. Right? So for instance, I could start my video, if I build a course on confidence, right? I wanna, I wanna help people to build confidence. My hook point could be, do you have those moments when lack of confidence prevents you from taking important actions? You wanna do something, but you feel that weird feeling in your stomach and you are paralyzed and you can't get yourself to take action. Right? How debilitating it feels when you lack confidence. This is stating the pain point. So now my avatar, whoever is looking for a confidence course, when they hear it in the first 10, 15 seconds, they are thinking, oh wow, yeah, man, I, I feel like this. It seems like this is for me, right? That's what you wanna create. Number two, how can you solve it? So then I would continue, I would say, well, you know, the great news is that confidence is not just a talent. It is a skill that you can learn, right? There are certain strategies and tools and mindset shifts that will help you to become more confident, not two months from now, but literally today, right? So now they realize, oh, there is a solution to this problem. Hmm. Then we have the next element, right? And it's credibility mixed with vulnerability. You want to introduce yourself. They need to know why they should listen to you. There are a lot of courses out there. Why, do, why should they buy your course? So rather than just telling people about all the things you've accomplished and coming across as you know, someone with a massive ego, what you want to do is you want to combine it with vulnerability. So you have to tell people, of course, why they need to listen to you. Want to, you want to tell them, well, you know, on my, on my journey, I've done X, Y, and Z, right? That's why I'm qualified. However, it wasn't always like this, right? And then you tell them about your story, your struggle, and you show them that they are here now, but you used to be here, and now you are a few steps ahead. So you share that journey with them. And when you mix that credibility with vulnerability, it's a cocktail that will make them want to buy your course. Yeah, you feel it? Yeah? Good stuff. The next one, well, you wanna have clear benefit. Very important, right? You, you, wanna, you wanna actually tell people, in this course you will learn X, Y, and Z, and this, and this, and that. And you wanna give them all the benefits, but at the same time, and this is important, this is, you may want to take a note on this. A lot of people don't do it. You also may want to tell people what they will not get in a course, you know? When I wrote my book, at the beginning of the book, I told people what they will not get from this book. I said, hey, you won't get thousands of flashy tactics. I'm not going to teach you how to make a million dollars next month. This is not some get-rich-quick scheme. No, 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 if you're looking for that, this is not the place. So, you know, in this example, building a confidence course, you know, I could tell people, well, in this course, you will learn mindset shifts and strategies and this and that and body language techniques, but it is not a dating course. I'm not gonna teach you how to be more confident with the opposite sex, right? I'm not gonna teach you how to open conversations. It's not about that. And the reason you wanna mention what is, not, what is not about is because when people see that trailer, you know, the last thing you want is for someone to think that it's something that it's not. Because that's when you get bad reviews. People go into your course and they realize, well, I was looking for something, but it's not even there. And now you get one star rating. You don't want that to happen. You want people to go into your course and get exactly what they felt they're gonna get plus some more, okay? Next thing, you wanna address silent objections, right? This is so important. So right at the beginning of this talk, right, I, I showed you the, the elephant and I said, well, let's address the big elephant in the room, chat GPT. I bet if I didn't talk about it, some of you until now would be thinking, come on, man, yeah, this is all great, but is this even relevant in the world of ChatGPT, right? Some of you would be thinking this, but because I addressed it, you can no longer really think about it. It's like, okay, well, he talked about it, great, I get it, let's move on. So you want to address those silent objections that your audience may have, okay? And of course, you wanna give call to action. You wanna tell people, go ahead and buy this course, right? Begin your transformation. Now, a lot of the times, what happens is we assume that people know that they need to buy a course but they don't. There is research out there that, seriously, if you tell people go and buy or go and subscribe, they are more likely to do it. So you have to give people call to action. You have to tell them, listen, you know, one day and tomorrow never come. Begin your transformation now. Go and get this course and let's start this journey together. And that's when you can mention the money back guarantee. Because if you tell people, listen, you know, there is no risk. There is a money back guarantee. You can change your mind any time. Go and buy this course now. Now people are thinking, well, I was about to leave this page, but she's making a great point. I mean, I can get my money back. I, you know, yeah, let me, I always procrastinate. Let me buy this course right away. So it really helps. Is this valuable? Are you getting, are you getting something out of this? Yeah? 
Okay. So please use this. Use this framework, and I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you, I want to say today. Well, today is tricky. By the end of the weekend, I want to, if you take on a chance, I want to challenge you to draft your promo video for whatever course you want to create. Just draft a promo video, draft the bullet points. Based on this structure, ask yourself, what would be the elements of my promo video, right? What are the benefits? What is my story that I want to share? The credibility, vulnerability, draft it. You will feel so much better having it because promo video is the most difficult video. But once you have it drafted, everything else becomes easier, okay? Whew, let's switch gears. Wow, this is a long presentation, isn't it? Let's switch gears. Let's talk about how to get your course shipped, how to get it produced, how to get it out there, okay? In fact, before we do this, um, let's get some energy. Let's just stand up. Just let's stand up. We've been sitting for, for way too long. Let's put some music. Let's just get some energy, you know? I don't want to go Tony Robbins on you, but let's... I'm not going to, you know do this, but put some music, let's just jump up and down, get some energy going, yeah? Feel it, you can do some breathing, some jumping, yeah, look at my father over there, look at him, he's feeling the vibe, yeah. Whatever you feel like doing, just, it's your space, give a high five to someone, give a hug to them, do some breathing. <laughs> okay, let's take some deep breaths together and then we're going to continue. Okay, let's take a deep breath in and out with a sound. And close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold it and imagine you are a creator, not a consumer. And then, and then breathe in all the creative spirit again. Feel filling your body and breathe out any self-doubt. <sighs> Do it again. Breathe in all the creative spirit. Hold it. It's filling your body. Hold it. And breathe out all the self-doubt. <sighs> yeah. Let's do it two more times. It's tempting just to keep going, right? <laughs> yeah. Just yawn pace. Just do it two more times. Let's do the last one together, come on. And now really loud, breathe out all the stress, all the anxiety. <sighs> great stuff, great stuff. All right, how are we feeling? All right, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I realize, you know, I'm here, I realize it's a two hour session, so, you know, we need to increase the energy. You know, I love talking about confidence and limiting beliefs and things like that. I love doing exercises. Course creation, there are certain things that may not be charis as charismatic as I want them to be, some of those processes, but they are important, so I really feel like I need to show them to you. But let's talk about your filming options, okay? Big question that a lot of people ask me about, what are my filming options? Well, we're gonna make this quick, because this is actually very simple. Of course, you can film yourself. Now, my father told you he filmed with this tiny iPhone. I believe it was iPhone 4 that you use with a basic microphone. That course became a bestseller. Nowadays, the technology is so crazy. With a regular phone, you can film better videos that they used to do in Hollywood like 15 years ago. It's crazy. So there should be no limiting beliefs around that. You know, getting a mic, what, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Getting a ring lamp, you know, the YouTuber's lamp. Very easy, very cheap, right? So you can't film yourself. But I understand that you may not want to do it because that's when you invite more limiting beliefs, more setbacks, because now you have to do it yourself. You commit to yourself. So what you may want to do is you may want to do a value exchange with somebody, right? That's an idea. You could find someone here and you could say, listen, you know how to film videos. You have a mic, you have everything. Let me help you and you help me, right? You scratch my back, I scratch your back. You are all experts in something. So for example, maybe you're a psychotherapist. You could find a video person and say, listen, I'll do a couple of sessions for you that will change your life and you just film my course. Done deal, 
right? Easy, right? You can share percentage. Now, this is a tricky one. I shared percentage at the beginning because I frankly had no other choice. I had no money stacked up, you know, so I, I went for it. I'm glad I did it in a way, right? Because I, I got a great crew, very loyal for many, many years. But if you decide you want to share percentage with someone, just make sure that you, you set very clear terms, right? And in the first moment, everyone is excited. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. We go, we're going to make millions, man. But then what happens, right? Everyone gets excited. What happens is after a year or two, when money actually starts coming in, you start pondering like, hey, did we talk about this or did we talk about that or did we, right? So it can get really, really tricky. So make sure that you set proper terms. Um, but you can also outsource. And I want to talk a little bit about it because this is so easy nowadays. There's so many people out there who are willing to film for you and it's not that expensive. And by the way, if you live in an expensive place, how many of you actually live in a country that is objectively very expensive? Anybody? Like US, right? Switzerland, places like that? Okay, so here's a trick. If you live in a place like this, why not combine your holiday with filming? Imagine you live in, let's say you live in LA. Let's say studio costs you with a person a couple of hundred per hour, right? Now you could go there, you could film, you know, two, three hours of videos, or you can organize a trip to Colombia, a place like this, go dance some salsa, enjoy yourself, right? Why not? Go for two, three weeks and then roll into studio every second day for a couple of hours and batch content, create enough content for a full year, right? Why not? You could do that. And, and the funny thing is that the trip is going to pay for itself. Right? If you do enough hours in a low-cost country, the trip is going to pay for itself. All right? So think about it. You could, literally, you could literally make videos for free. And of course, you can use the hybrid model where you combine different things. Maybe you film a video by yourself and you give it to somebody for editing. Or maybe you want to use your own creative energy in editing, so you ask somebody to film your video or you pay them or you do value exchange and then you edit it yourself. Plenty of options, no point of going too deep into it because this should not be an excuse. Nowadays, filming is easier than ever, right? This is one that's very important, your pyjama draft. This is, this, is one of those, this is one of those things that is, is one of the most powerful strategies that I wanted to show you today, okay? In my quest, a lot of people commented that this is like the number one most powerful strategy that you can use. When I speak to a lot of people, they reveal that this is a game changer, okay? Pyjama draft. How many of you are familiar with pyjama draft? Anybody? Some of you, okay, I see some of you. Okay, what pyjama draft is all about, it's, it's about alleviating the pressure that you feel when getting in front of a camera, right? It can be nerve-wracking. I showed you that picture before, and I know a lot of us, we have this, this gut response of, holy shit, there's a camera on my face, right? You know, you can speak intelligently about a topic. The moment there's a camera, it's like you lose your words. I get it, right? It happens to almost everybody. How can you prevent it from happening? Well, you do the pyjama draft. What you want to do is, when you have your outline, and you already have a lot of things written down, once you have your outline with all the videos, you have your promo video drafted, what you do is you dress up in a pyjama, or you go half naked, or you put something weird on your head, right? You want to make yourself look ridiculous. And then you set your phone, and you click record, and you start filming your course. You just film it from the beginning till the end. From the beginning till the end. Now, if you make a mistake, that's fine. You take a piece of paper, okay, I made a mistake here, let's do it again. And then you do it again. But you want to film it from the beginning till the end. And here's what's going to happen. When you film your entire course on your phone, you don't watch the videos. You don't want to watch them. Because now if you see yourself in a pyjama or you know, sitting there half naked with a bad background, limiting beliefs may kick in. So that's not the purpose of this video. It's not for you to watch and look for feedback. No, the purpose is to show to yourself that you're capable of filming your course. So what you do is when you finish your pyjama draft, you celebrate and then you delete the video. You delete it. But you know that you are capable of filming this entire course. It's a beautiful feeling. And by the way, I do this before my speeches, you know? When I have a talk to give, what I do is I go for a long walk, I put my headphones so no one thinks I'm crazy when I'm talking to myself, and I literally, and I do this. This is like, if you see me walking around in my headphones, you never know if I'm actually talking to someone or if I'm talking to myself. But I would walk around and I would do the entire speech just talking out loud. And I never have a script, you know? I, I, I have structure, but I go with the flow within a structure. So I'm walking, I have my timer, and I'm talking. 
and talking and talking and talking. And one, two hours later, it's done. And now it just gives you so much confidence because you realize, well, if I could do it while dodging traffic, you know, all the noises, right, trying to figure out where I'm going to walk, if I could go through the entire speech on the go while walking, well, clearly I can do it being on a stage with my slides. So it's the same principle. It's powerful. So my question is, how many of you want to commit to doing this? Yeah? Okay, awesome. So let's make a commitment right now. Right now. I want you to pull out your phone. Don't go on IG. Don't go, you know. I want you to go into your calendar. And I want you to commit to a date within the next two weeks. Because honestly, you don't need more than that. You don't need more than two weeks. You could do it within the next week. No joke. Okay, I've done this before. You don't need that much time. Pick a date within the next two weeks. Put it in your calendar. And that's going to be your pyjama draft. And I don't care if you feel ready or not. When that day comes, you will film it. It's just a draft. No one has to see it. Sounds good? Yeah, let's do it right now. Let's do it. I know I could tell you do it later to save time. No, no, we're going to do it right now. You need to make sure you, you commit. In fact, let's just take 15 seconds. Tell somebody next to you. Tell two people next to you to what they do commit it. Let's just spice it up. Just right now, just share with someone when you're going to do it. How does it feel? Does it feel a bit uncomfortable? Yeah? Yeah? But does it feel exciting? Yeah? Because you're going to do it. Again, this is a draft. There's nothing to worry about. But let's talk about platforms, okay? This is one of the most common questions people ask me. Jimmy, which platforms should I use, okay? This is important. So I'm gonna tell you the truth about the platforms. I'm gonna tell you what types of platforms, how to decide, I'm gonna reveal my favorite strategy to get started. Sounds good? All right, let's talk about the truth about platforms. Let me ask you a question. Imagine that I give you a car. I give you a car, you cannot sell it, but you can use it for five years. Right? Five years you can use it. Which car would you pick? How many of you would pick the one on the left? Just, let's just be completely honest. The one on the left? Raise your hands high, okay? Yeah, roughly maybe 40% of you, 30, 35. How many of you would pick the one on the, on the, did I say right? Sorry, I said left before, yeah? I, okay. How many of you would pick the one on the right? Okay, Inter holy shit, interesting. So more of you would pick the one on the right. Interesting, okay. So when I do this, I, I tried this at a digital nomad conference and almost everybody wanted the one on the right. But the interesting thing is that the car on the right, it may be what, 20 grand? I don't know, 25? I don't know how much that, that tent costs, but maybe 30K if it's a new one, 35? The one on the left is a Bugatti. You know, Bugattis cost millions of dollars, right? But I told you you cannot sell it. You cannot sell it, right? So some of you pick the one on the right because it's the lifestyle, right? The car, the car on the left, you can't go to the countryside. So is one of those cars inherently better than the other? No, right? It's about your needs, what you want out of the car. It, you may like a Bugatti. If you have three kids, good luck with that. I mean, it's not going to happen. The, you might be very sad, right? If, if this was a real situation, there would be probably a tear going down. But it is what it is. So with platforms, it's exactly the same. It's not that one platform type or one specific platform is better than others. It depends on what you want to create. What are your circumstances? So let's talk about it. What are the main types of platforms? Well, you've got those with no marketplace that give you a ton of control. Kajabi, you probably heard about Kajabi, Thinkific, Teachable. Look, there are many new platforms popping up every day. Mushrooms after rain, it's crazy. More and more of them. But the main thing is that those platforms give you a ton of control. You set your price, you can customize the landing page, you can customize promotions, you retain email addresses, right? Kajabi has the entire system in it. You can build a website, you can build all types of landing pages, you can do email marketing, right? Lots of different things. However, they don't have an audience. Right? There's no marketplace. So you can build an amazing course, but you have to find people to sell it to. And that gets tricky. It's good for some people. I'll talk about it in a second. But if you don't want to figure out how to sell to an audience, if you don't you know, want to have all of this complication, maybe this is not for you. Now, you also have platforms with massive marketplaces that don't give you that much control. 
Example, Udemy. Udemy is actually the biggest player in the game. Udemy for business as well, right? They have almost 60 million people, 60 million students from all over the world. So when you publish your class, people get access to it right away. Not all of them, of course, right? You know, it depends. They have their algorithms. It depends on your topic, how good your class is. But you've got access to all of those people, potentially which is great because you don't need any marketing budget. You don't, also, you don't have to pay for Udemy. Think Effect, Teachable, Kajabi, you got to pay every month to host your courses. Udemy, you don't have to pay anything, right? So it's just an easy way to get started. However, less control. You don't retain directly the email addresses. You can email your audience. However, you can't get those email addresses. You have to use their platform, right? You can customize your price, but you can't customize all of the promotions. They will be running promotions. They will be discounting your courses. So there is something for something, right? There are pros and cons. Now also you have those elite platforms, Mindvalley, Masterclass, Coursera. Honestly, I wouldn't think too much about those, right? If you can get on one of those at some point, that's great, but don't optimize for it. And by the way, the best way to get, for example, on Mindvalley is to build your own courses. Right? Because now you show them you, that you walk your talk. If you want to build a course, how many of you want to build a course with Mindvalley? Okay, a lot of you. I'm not surprised. You know, a lot of you, right? Well, the best way to do it is to show them that you have other successful courses on other platforms. Then they know that you walk your talk, you have an audience, you're more likely to do it. And of course, there are other strategies, cohort courses, live classes, right? You can do, you can do combo, coaching plus course, lots of different things. You know, we could stay here for 20 hours talking about different options. So you may be wondering, well, this is a bit complicated. How do I even decide? How do I make a decision? I'll try to simplify it for you. For me, it's all about simplification. Rather than going super deep into something and then you getting stuck, and the next year coming here saying, hey man, I saw your talk, you know, almost build a course but never pull the trigger. I want you to pull the trigger on something. Okay, if you have an existing audience, you have a ton of flexibility. You can do whatever you want. You can publish on Udemy, you can publish on Thinkific Kajabi because you have an audience. You can send them an email and you can say, hey, I have this new course, it's whatever, 250 bucks, Go and get it, right? So that's easy. Audience, lots of options. If you don't have an audience, well, I recommend just start with Udemy. Just go and get started, okay? You will immediately get access to an audience. And by the way, you can always use the hybrid model where you publish on different platforms. Most of those platforms are non-exclusive. You can publish on many of them, so why not dip your toes in different ponds? Just try different things, see what works. You no, know, Udemy worked extremely well for me. Right? Well, of course, I, I worked it, right? I, I pushed myself, but I resonated with their platform. Great. Maybe some of you will resonate more with uh, Thinkific, Kajabi, maybe some of the new platforms. So go out there and try. Anything is better than paralysis by analysis. Right? A lot of us, we, 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 we want to make a perfect decision, so then we get stuck and we never do anything. Okay? And here is the strategy I recommend. What I recommend, and this is, if you do this, it's going to be so powerful. And it's very simple. Just go out there. Just get, seriously, just get out there. Just start small, but start now. I, and I just realized, I didn't start small, this is probably not starting small, it's probably wrong picture. When I saw it, I meant start fast, you know? But start now, avoid toxic perfectionism, okay? So like, if in doubt, create a free course. Like, how long would it take you to create a free course you can, just, you can do it, you can create a free 10 video series and dump it everywhere, everywhere, right? Put it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, put it on Udemy, set up a, a Thinkific account, put it there, collect email addresses, use those 10, 15, 20 videos to get your feet wet to get started. And then you get feedback from your audience, right? And when your audience gives you feedback, you, oh, a bit too far. When your audience gives you feedback, you use that feedback to add more and more and more to recalibrate your content to make it better. Make sense? Yeah? How many of you are willing to just pull the trigger this month? Yeah? That was fast. Yeah, I like that. Bam! Let's do it. Because seriously, you know, a lot of people have this misconception that there, there's like one massive launch and you either make it or you die. It doesn't work like this. Like, think about social media, right? You know, I'm sure you use Instagram, you know, YouTube, right? We publish stuff. I mean, you don't think to yourself, I have only 10 shots, 10 posts. They either will work, I'm going to delete my account. No, you just keep posting stuff. So is it really a big deal to use all the process we talked about, take your notes, and figure out 
10 videos you can make. Series of 10 damn videos is not a lot. 10 videos, something legacy you want to create, something you want to give to your audience, to your customer avatar. Design those videos, do the pyjama draft, then film them, and then just dump them everywhere. You will learn so much, I'm telling you. And I want to give you an example that's going to inspire you. Okay, this course, 40-minute confidence guide. Some of you probably notice, well, it says 40 minutes, but it says five hours over there. What's going on? Well, this course initially was created as a free course. I literally rolled into a studio and I said, hey guys, let's try something different. Let me do like this quick 40-minute course. I have an idea. So I did it in one go. I literally filmed this thing in one go. Like one video, okay, free claps, another one, another one. 40 minutes later, the course is done. But it did really well. It was free, but the reviews were amazing. And I'm like, damn, th you know, I'm onto something. So I added more content and I added the price tag to that course. And it started making money. So what do you do? You add more content. If it's winning, well, you know, you put more bets on the winning horse. So I added more and more content. Now it's five hours long. Look, 80,000 people. This generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in hard cash, right? Started as a free course. I mean, how crazy is this? One random idea rolled into the studio, built a course, and now it's a best sell, 20,000 ratings. I'm showing this to you because I feel like this really portrays how important this principle is of just putting stuff out there, just getting started, right? Get started, build a bunch of courses. Not all of them will stick, but some of them will stick if you, if you really push yourself. The first thing, right? Thought experiment. These are the best practices, okay? Imagine you go to a selection for special forces, okay? They're busting your ass every day. You sleep five hours a night and you get two meals per day. What would you rather eat? The Michelin star, you know, delicious meal on the left, you know, perfect seasoning, the chef himself, you know, brings it, you know, enjoy twice a day or just a ton of rice. Rice, is it because of the taste? No. Energy, you don't care about the taste. You want nutrition, you want energy, you need the power for the special forces selection. I feel like this is a good analogy for life and for courses. A lot of the times we focus on the flashy things. We focus on, you know, polishing everything, making it a little bit, oh, oh, this is not ideal, this is not perfect, let's make it a little bit better. Well, if you want to be successful in this game, well, you have to accept that 90% is good enough. And you have to go for the volume. You have to keep smashing it. If you wait for a perfect moment to publish a course, and then you put it out there, and then you wait another year to publish another one, and then you wait another year, nothing's ever gonna happen. Volume, passion, obsession, you gotta get obsessed over this stuff. And I guarantee you, when you get obsessed, when you take action, you set up the pyjama draft date, if you get obsessed over it, you will get the results. I guarantee you that, okay? Second one, activate your inner circle to build the momentum. So important. When you publish a course, you want to make sure that there are people ready to take it right away. You don't just want to wait, you know, and, and, and hope. Let's hope, you know, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it will not happen. No, you want to activate your inner circle. You want to tell them how important this is for you. And you want to make sure that when you publish your course, people are ready to get it. Now, I'm not saying, you know, sell to your friends, but hey, pay me, pay me, pay me. No, you can release free access codes to your inner circle, you can say, hey guys, you know, yeah, my friends, this is really important. I overcame a lot of limiting beliefs to make it happen. Please take my course. Here are, here are free access codes. This is so important to me. And guess what? When they take your course, at some point, they will be asked to post a rating. Unless you have a really shitty friend. I guess it's gonna be a five-star rating. So that's how you get your first ratings, right? And it's kind of like with merry-go-round. You ever played on one of those? We had a bunch of those in Poland, you know, like really rusty, you know, barely could make them move. But the thing is, once you, you pull it strong enough and it's moving, it keeps going. But you have to add some extra pulls to keep it going. But the initial part is the most important, to make it move. That's why you need your inner circle. Next one, you want to create leverage with smart partnerships, okay? So, I don't know why we have this idea we have to do everything by ourselves. We don't. Why not find someone who is within your niche and has an audience? Why not make that person a deal they cannot refuse? Right? Why not piggyback of their audience, but at the same time give something to them that maybe they don't have? So think outside the box. How can you partner with other people? Because you can, there are plenty of people out there who already create. Maybe you can say, listen, you have an audience, we are in the same niche. I tell you what, let's build a course together. 
I will supply 70% of the videos. I'll do all the work, I'll publish it, and you know what? I'll keep only 25% of the profits, the rest is yours. It's like, what a great deal for that person. It's like, so you're telling me I don't have to do almost anything and, and I'm gonna make 80% of the profits? Sure, let's do it. But what you get is you get access to that audience. This is just one example. But, but really think outside the box, right? Making partnership with different teams, different companies, so powerful. And another one, right? You wanna stand out. So you wanna proactively connect with people who are decision makers. For example, Udemy, right? When I started publishing on Udemy, I went out of my way to connect with the team. I would email them. I say, hey, listen, I'm really keen. I wanna to talk to you, right? I, 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 wanna, I wanna brainstorm with you. I would just be all over the place. I, I always try to push myself to really connect with those people. And guess what? Most individuals don't do it. So then you stand out and then you, you jump on a call and now you're not just another person not just another name, but you are an actual human being. It's much easier to make things happen. So connect with people. When you jump on a platform, find out who is the team. Try to get in touch with them, provide value. That's how you're gonna stand out. Make sense? Yeah? Whew, the final part. Building courage and confidence to actually publish your course. We talked about the process. You know, I like this part a lot because you know, based on my experience, this is something that really holds people back. Of course, we don't have that much time, but I want to give you a couple of mindset shifts that will help you to, to get this course out there, right? The last thing you want is to write everything down and then, you know, those notes, notes gathering dust. First of all, before I forget, if you want to connect with me, this is the easy way. There are no upsells. I'm not selling you anything. This is literally my Instagram, my LinkedIn, basic stuff. I figured, I, I learned this recently actually, I always forget to do those things. You know, if you went to my previous talks at Mind Valley, I never pitch anything and I never even give my contact details. And then I meet people after a year, hey man, yeah, I've been trying to contact you and I realize, well, that person used the wrong, you know, the wrong, uh, the wrong channels. So anyhow, these are my details. Now, I wanna ask you, what do those people have in common? I'm gonna show you four people. What do they have in common? Who is that? Michelle Obama, okay. Michelle Obama, what about this one? Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga. yeah. Maya Angelou, yeah, she wrote 13, 13 different books. Do you already see maybe some similarity? Well, the final person. Huh. Ooh, I tricked you. What do they have in common? Anybody? Let's see, I'm curious, if you can get it, okay. Foreigners? Authors? No? Say again? Scared? Oh. Uh -huh. No, 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 there's another thing. There's another thing. Damn, I'm curious if anybody can get it. Okay, let me tell you. Okay, I appreciate this. Let me Change makers, I appreciate this. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you what, 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 what I meant. We all had imposter syndrome at some point. Mm, yeah, we all had imposter syndrome, right? And you know, a lot of us, we experience imposter syndrome, right? You, know, we, you, you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like, well, am I a fraud? Am I a fake? Am I a phony? Will people find me out? Right? A lot of people have this feeling. I'm sure a lot of you in the room, you have this feeling when you think about building courses. Do you, right? Do you have this feeling sometimes, right? Who am I to do this, right? We talked about it at the beginning. I'm not the biggest expert in the world. Why would people listen to me? But those people, including myself, we had episodes of imposter syndrome. I want to show you some examples, right? You know, this is interesting. So Michelle Obama said, I still have a little imposter syndrome. It doesn't go away, that feeling that you shouldn't take me that seriously. What do I know? Interesting. Michelle Obama. Maya Angelou, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, ooh, they're go going to find me out. I've run a game on everybody and they're going to find me out. 13 books. She's a legend, literally she's a legend. Imposter syndrome. Another person, Natalie Portman, right? I mean, these are long ones, I'm not gonna read it, just have a look, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And David Bowie, this is heartbreaking, right? What he said, like, I, I really felt so utterly inadequate. I thought the work was the only thing of value. I could give you so many examples. We could stay here for another hour. I could give you plenty of examples. I personally know people who are out there making big things happen and they have the imposter syndrome, right? But it's important that you remember that 
you know, you have more, and we're going to talk about it in a second. I'm going to, I'm going to prove to you that you're better than you think you are. But, you know, oftentimes when we have an imposter syndrome, it actually means that you know a lot, right? There's something called the Dunn and Kruger effect. So people who don't know that much often think they know a lot, right? You have that friend, dinner table, you want to go to Colombia. They're like, Colombia, oh man, it's dangerous, you know, this and that. And we'll keep ranting for 40 minutes. Why? You're going to get kidnapped and you're going to get killed. And then he asks, when was the last time you went to Colombia? It's like, oh, I haven't been there, but everyone knows it, you know. I, I saw Narcos, you know, I was like, yeah, great, you know, awesome. So people who don't know that much, they often assume that they know, they know a lot. But those of us who know a lot, we, ha we are experts, legitimate experts. We doubt ourselves because the universe is becoming so big, right? We see, as you grow, you see, holy shit, there's so much more that I don't know. So you forget how good you are, right? And it's important when you build courses, you want to focus on the positive impact, right? Rather than just thinking about yourself, I feel like an imposter, I feel like a phony. No, no, no. Remind yourself that people like Michelle Obama, Maya Angelou experience it as well, right? And you would be surprised that people here at Mind Valley, authors, speakers, who also have experienced this. I know because I talk to people, right? This is a human thing. So what you want to do is you want to focus on the impact. It's not about you. You are the vehicle for the impact that you make. And remember that you compare, when we compare ourselves to other people, when we underestimate ourselves and overestimate other people, we essentially compare our interior with their exterior. You know your insecurities, you know your self-doubts, your, your limitations, your traumas, right? You know all of that. You maybe were abused back in the day, right? Maybe you don't feel good enough. And you compare all of that with some polished picture of another person. And that person secretly is still having those insecurities, right? We all play this bullshit game that you cannot win, right? Thinking that others are better than us. But they are not. We are all good enough. That's what, so it's so important to realize it. But I feel like this is a really good mindset shift, looking at this. I, I like this slide because it portrays it very well. If you compare this with that, you can never possibly win. Right? And this is why it's so important to remind yourself how good you are. Now, we don't have the time now, but it's important that you take a daily confidence shower. Right? Part of it was actually what we did with the impossibilities that you turned into your possibilities. Did that exercise to help you to come up with topic ideas. But did you notice that when you were writing down those impossibilities that became your possibilities, you probably felt better about yourself? Yeah? Did you feel a bit better about yourself when you wrote down the challenges you overcame? Well, that's your daily confidence shower. Now, imagine if you use this in the context of course creation, but also what if you use it in the context of your confidence, of overcoming anxiety, building your self-esteem? How powerful is it? So I encourage you to do that. Like every day, take that confidence shower. You know, we brush our teeth every day. We take a shower every day. How come we don't work on our self-esteem, on our mental health every day? I will show you a short story. This is my grandpa, my grandpa Tadeusz. So my grandpa, when he was a teenager, he was fighting in the Second World War, right? Imagine, teenager, you're fighting for six years in a war. Now, because of all of that stress, right, all of the anxiety, all, all of, of course, poor lifestyle, poor nutrition, after the war, he had a heart attack and he had a stroke that left half of his body paralyzed. So he couldn't speak, okay, he couldn't speak. But he was always a very cheerful guy. Even on this picture, you see, he's smiling. Right? Always very cheer, cheer. He could say maybe two, three words, like tak, tak, two tie, and that's it, right? Very, these are Polish words, by the way. So, very cheerful guy. And I was always wondering, when I was a kid, like, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about his stories, what he went through, right? He, you know, you go for a war as a teenager, I want to hear about it. How did he handle stress and anxiety? How did he handle fear? I want to hear those stories. Well, I never will. He died when I was 16. Right? He's going to always be somewhat of a mystery to me, forever. I'll never find out about this guy. Right? But I wish he wrote a book. I wish he had a damn course. I wish there was something left, apart from a couple of different photos. Well, guess what? You have the opportunity. Right? You, you, you are here. We have our phones. We, you know, you are, you're literally learning the process. You've got the opportunity to build a course. You can, and you can share it with the world. With a few clicks, everyone on the planet can see your courses. So how come we are not using those opportunities? I wish he could, but he can't. So on your journey, think about the people who wish they could publish something that could create some type of legacy, right? Course, book, speech, whatever it is, but they can't. 
They just can't do it. And you can, you are here and you can do it. And since, you know, the story is pretty dark, to spice things up a little bit, anybody notice my hair? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I look like a pen, right? My mom is over there. I mean, maybe that's why I had anxiety when I was growing up, you know, looking like a pen. But let me ask you, just to finalize, just to finalize, and I'm, see, I'm doing pretty well with the time. I'm not going too much over, just a few minutes. But just to finalize this, I want to give you a mindset shift, okay? I want to ask you about different books, movies, courses, speeches that change your life. Think about those things that changed your life. You know those moments when you read something and there's this, the reality is, is no longer the same. It's completely different. Maybe the conversation you have, maybe the, you know, the, the course you watched, the quest you watched on Mind Valley, maybe one of those speeches, you can literally go back to that moment and you realize that was a defining moment in my life. Can you think about something? Yeah? For me, it was The Far Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I read that book over 10 years ago and I realized, you know what? There are different possibilities out there. This guy opened the doors to new possibilities. I realized you can travel the world and you can make things happen. Right? You can make things happen. And beforehand, I didn't know. Just a poor Polish kid with limiting beliefs, with anxiety, right? not believing in myself. And now I realize you can actually make it happen. What about this guy? Anybody recognizes him? This beautiful young gentleman? How crazy to watch this. How crazy to look. This is Vishen. 20 years ago. He was sitting there, what do you think? Did, did he have limiting beliefs? Yeah, he for sure had limiting beliefs. Almost gave up, yeah. You know the story when he lived in New York, shared a, a tiny flat with his friend Vardan and Christina, right? And they had to take turns like, hey, we, we want to be intimate with my wife. Can you, um, can you go for a walk, right? Right, so it was tough, it was tough. He didn't know if he's gonna make it happen, but he believed in his vision and himself and he made it happen. Now my question is, what if he couldn't find that courage? What if he didn't make it happen? We wouldn't be here. How crazy, how many lives would have been completely different? We would not be here, right? I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be talking to you, and you will build a course, I know you will. So you probably wouldn't build a course. The chain of events would have been completely different, but it all goes back to that moment when he was building the company. And my question is, think about yourself. What is your gift? What is the responsibility you have? Right? How you will impact the world? Because it is your responsibility. It's not just about you benefiting from your course. It's about all the people that you will impact with your course. It's about someone else doing a talk in a place like this 10 years from now, showing your picture over there. Just imagine that. Imagine that someone shows your picture over there and asks you, as the audience, how your lives would have been different if that person didn't do whatever they did. It could be you up there. Think about it, right? You have the responsibility, you have a gift to give to this world. And listen, the traffic lights of life will never be green. It's always a little bit like this. It's either red or it's yellow. We don't feel ready. But something tells me that you are here because you know deep inside that you are ready. You just have to realize, Eric Edmeads always says, I love this. He says, you know, the butterfly can't see its wings. So you have to realize you have the wings. You can fly, you just have to be willing, you have to be courageous enough to jump off the cliff, go out there and make it happen. Guys, thank you so much for coming. You've got a course in you, let's make it happen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You've got it in you, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen.